play classical guitar. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I was reading that you are, were the first, do got the first doctorate of musical arts at the uh, New England Conservatory. That's right. There were a few uh, doctorate candidates and uh, several who have graduated since then, but I was the first to actually go through the entire uh, program. And uh, yeah, I graduated in 2012. That's that a while back already. <laughs> Thanks. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So you are a doctor of guitar, a guitar doctor. That's you right. Say, yes. <laughs> and you have performed all around the world, uh, or, or several different countries, perhaps not all around, maybe not Antarctica yet. I, I, I want to. Yeah, yeah it's on the list. <laughs> yeah. list. <laughs> Where have you been touring the last year or two? Um, yeah, I've been to various places, mainly in America. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, in California just uh, now in January. Mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, playing for the Guitar Society in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Did a few performances also around here. Mm -hmm. uh, had a very exciting project with the Celebrity Series of Boston uh, back uh, in November. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a dance and guitar, so that was really right. different and exciting. Do you do any composing yourself? I don't compose, no. but I arrange, and I You're love, right. I'm right. really, really into arranging. Mm -hmm. um, this is as close as it gets to composi composing, except I'm not a composer. Yeah. Uh, and well, there's a lot of individual choice in arranging, though. That's that yeah. is absolutely correct, and uh, for us guitarists, we do a lot of arranging in, mm -hmm. in the repertoire that we play. You have had an opportunity to play at, with some of your inspirations and, and even study with some of uh, some amazing guitarists. That's right. So Elliot Fisk uh, yeah. was my mentor. And St still is in, in many ways. He's now also my colleague as yeah. a faculty at New England Conservatory. You're both on, uh, the, on the faculty there. That's right, yeah. and, and, but, but he's been my mentor for many, many years, and uh, first at the Mozarteum University in Salzburg, mm -hmm. and uh, also when I was a doctorate student at New England Conservatory. Yeah. And uh, I, I got a chance to actually perform with him a few times, and it's mm. always been very, very exciting. Um, performed with Grisha, uh, mm -hmm. my good friend Grisha, also many times, and he is a, an absolute star of flamenco. Yeah. And uh, we've, we've had some hybrid programs uh, where we mix uh, Spanish classical music and flamenco, and that's been a lot of fun every time. Oh, very neat. Can you tell us a little bit about the Spanish influences of the music that you'll be playing? In flamenco, there are different genres. Uh, they call them palos, mm -hmm. and each of the palos has. Um, specifications and uh, one of these categories is called palo de ida y vuelta and the whole idea of these palos are the ones that are influenced by the new world for instance a guajira uh, is a form of flamenco but it's also a um, style that comes from cuba right and so that's how both worlds actually uh, got to influence and that term actually comes from flamenco okay uh, which is interesting the influence of kind of not just even you know old and new world but the Moorish influence on sure. uh, European music and the, really the African influence For sure. uh, and then we can talk when we come to Latin America that you get both the African influence through Spain but then also the African influence from like Western Africa through the Caribbean uh, into Latin America absolutely so. um, especially in terms of rhythms oh. uh, I think Latin America Latin American music is particularly rich in terms of uh, the rhythm, mm -hmm. and that's that's uh, lots of that does come from Western Africa or other influences. Yeah. Right. Thank you for coming and speaking with me today. Oh, thanks so much, Clayton.
thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting and for giving us this opportunity. Thank you very much. You, you play music that is both inspired from where you grew up uh, in Mozambique, I believe, but also in, it brings in other flavors. Um, how do you like to talk about your music? Yes, I feel like the core of my music it's um, Mozambican, mm -hmm. uh, but of course I feel like I, you know, I'm citizen of the world of now. Course. After coming to the U.S. and studying, having to open up my mind to different uh, horizons, I mean, so on varieties of music, I feel my music it's African music with jazz influence, yeah. and could be described as Afro pop and Afro jazz. I know a lot of folks when they think of Afro pop, they think of you know people like Fela Kuti, uh, and they think of so much of the the West African music, or even if they don't know African music and they know rock and roll or the blues, uh, which obviously have roots in African music, but so much of that is West African music, and Mozambique is on the eastern coast. Yes. Uh, what are the big differences between like the music that you know and, and the styles that people are used to hearing from Western Africa and what you know from from Eastern African and Mozambique? So I. I am this is a good question and I'm thinking about it right now and it's a really good one. Mm. So I feel like the West Africa has very um kind of um standardized type of music that mm. you know when you talk about West Africa everybody has an idea of you know um kalimba sound mm. and other cordophone instruments that are using that are very much interpreting to the conventional instruments like keyboards and uh, and the melismatic singing mm -hmm. um, you know that they have in West Africa which is a little bit different from um, East Africa mm -hmm. um, we have other rhythms that so many people are not aware of them and I'll be exploring mostly Marabenta mm -hmm. which is the most popular rhythm from the south of Mozambique okay. and most of the music that I'll be playing. Is it uh, in a four count or what's the like uh, we don't have to get too deep into the music but yeah. I'm curious is it is it does, is it still like four beats per measure is as so much of it's like you it's know western ears kind of are accustomed to hearing or does it play with different time counts? It's interesting because um, Sometimes it's it's in four four for right. better interpretation, mm -hmm. but it's overlapping. Could be four over three. Okay. So will be always you will you will think it's four, but there's twelve eight inside as well. There's a lot of subdivisions, okay. but four four is going to be there, and three four is going to be there. I think that's the main um, of the East Africa. I feel like okay. three four and four four are yeah. big ones. Mm -hmm. So. For folks who don't talk about music that way normally, I think that will still feel, it feels more familiar, I think, to some folks. If you start going into fives and sevens, and you know, some Odd people who aren't, when we're not used to hearing that, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Yes. Um, there's so many, I mean, playing guitar is, I mean, it, it's huge around the world. There's been so many, like, I think, incredible African guitarists. Um, but they're very different styles. I think of you know Hassan Hakmoon or uh, Ali Farka or yes. you know I don't know. We could, I could drop names all day. But yes. who who are your main influences when you think of guitar? Are you do you think of African influences? Are you more inspired by uh, Wes Montgomery or Jimi Hendrix or uh, who do you like to? When I know you have your own voice, and I'm not trying to say you uh, yeah. you are like anyone else, but I'm sure you have influences. Of course. Um I do have a lots of influences from even younger guitarists from Mozambique mm -hmm. that um, because I'm very much interested in the Mozambican marabenta rhythm as I was saying mm -hmm. and the way the guitar is being explored there, the way they play with triplets. Mm -hmm. So I feel I'm looking at the guitar as a world, you know, like as the universe and and I take what I feel it will work it would work for what I'm doing. Mm. So when I listen to words, I like the way he developed his idea, his sound, and Jim Hendrix, especially his sound, it's just unbelievable, it's like, like weather, yeah. really very strong. So for me, um, I feel they're part of this universe where each one is just contributing in a different uh, perspective 
to the same goodness of the music and the guitar. So I feel that I'm incorporating all of them. I love, sure. you know, right now I, I enjoy listening to rock guitars because I feel they they reach another level of uh, virtuosity mm -hmm. that I feel would be good to incorporate to what I'm doing. So we'll, and then suddenly I listen to bluegrass. I'm like, oh wow, that's beautiful how they're mm. playing up in strings. And um, let me bring that to my, some of my roots. So it feels like over time will always be changing. I'll be into this, maybe mm. because there's no snow, and maybe <laughs> over the snow I'll be going <laughs> to, to some other different influences, but I, I, I tend to incorporate most of them. Mm -hmm. that, that's very reasonable. There's so much to hear. And yes. So why, are there certain things that you're inspired by? Are there themes to your music? I know that sometimes you know, love is a central theme to so much of what we do. Uh, other people find great inspiration in you know, kind of landscapes uh, and, and talking. And other people you know, like to play tribute to the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have specific, or maybe in different songs, you could tell us a little bit about some of your songs and, and, and what inspired them? Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, um, you know, coming from Mozambique, I'm coming from a um, very um, unlikely area to be end up in the U.S., you mm. know, looking at the resources, not having enough access to information, internet, and all the resources that could have guided me to get here. Mm. Uh, I never had in my, it, it didn't come to my mind that one day I would be here and, you know, having this interview, playing right. music, you know, just all this environment. Um, so I feel uh, the fact that I left home suddenly, for me, the longing um, about home, it's been the biggest thing mm. at the beginning and it still is because sure. I feel Maybe I haven't said enough about it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you still have a lot of family in Mozambique? Yeah, I do. I, I do have. Um, I do have three brothers. My mom, my oh, dad. Mm -hmm. That's hard. So, oh, it's an amazing opportunity to be here. Absolutely. Uh, but however, you know, having to create that disconnection, and as the time is passing by, as I'm learning about life, about love, about other things. And I want to, um, I'm the firstborn, I still feel like I should always look back to my brothers and sister, like, hey, how are things going and all that? Right. Are you guys having fun? How is your <laughs> life journey and all that? So, and through the music, I feel like I'm transmitting all that. That's, you know, when I talk, I'm very much talking about that connection, mm. the love I have for them and what I think in my perspective maybe will be good for, for them to check out and maybe will inspire them mm. for the voice that they want to create in their lives and and then I look to Mozambique you know current uh, political situation and um, I look as well to how they the view of men and y women in the society because you know mm -hmm. always changed and the things the rights that we we have here in the u.s comparing to what existed in mozambique you know mm -hmm. so it makes me very much um think about here and back home and what what i wish i could um, uh, influence back home from mm -hmm. what i've been learning and I'm sure there must be things that you'd like to influence here as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that certainly sounds like something that everyone can relate to. Uh, many of us know people. I have family far away, not quite as far as Mozambique, but mm -hmm. um, it is hard to miss people. And I'm sure that resonates incredibly. Yeah, so, yeah And that's very common you. experiences, even though we can be from all parts of the globe. Yes. Um, that there, there's something about the way we care for each other and our family. Um, that is universal. That's universal, yeah. It's just love at the end, as you said. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I know next you're going to play us a little music. So it's a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure we could speak for hours because when we start talking about love and, and what matters to us, uh, that's where the heart goes. But let's, uh, it also goes into the music. I want 
was born in between rivers of sunbeds and night. Breathing the heat from Sahara. Staring at a sculptures of snow on Kilimanjaro. Fighting for freedom. Come, let's paint our face with a new colors. Come, let's make a dress from flowers. Come, let's build a new class from a gold. Sakani ni mafu, mana gut sagata masu. Masakani ni mafu, 
Manaku cokota masu Unga sakani ni mafu Manaku cokota masu Unga sakani ni mafu Mana ku cokota masu Maci ku cokota masu Kau namba mana ku ona Maci ku cokota masu Kau namba mana ku ona Unangis aku cani Shaka shaka, she cool is she why he could call her she chavu. Ni misa malei, unga saka ni ni mafu. Manaku chokota masu, ay ay ay, unga saka ni ni mafu. Manaku chokota masu. Hey 